Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover creating this little read estimation timer similar to how Medium does it, as well as adding in this little progress bar. I can go ahead and actually close this because we don't need a timer for this. Uh, and yeah, that's basically all we're going to be doing. We're going to be using stimulus for this. So it's all going to be a client side thing, not on the server. You can of course refactor it to be a server side thing if you're so inclined. But yeah, let's just go ahead and let's get started. We're going to go with a Rails new video. And for this, we're going to be using dash J E S build and dash C for bootstrap. The reason being, uh, the progress bar is bootstrap and we have a bunch of other stuff we can use. So I figured it might be cool to, uh, to use that again, just to show off that you can in fact do this out of the box fairly simply. Now, in terms of what we're actually doing here, I don't need form it open. Uh, we're going to be using lorem ipsum to generate some text that we can use for our estimations, although we're going to need a couple more paragraphs, I'd imagine. So now we got 10. Uh, we can then come over to, not the word counter, we can come over to the progress bar. So this is where we get the progress bars from Bootstrap. It's under components in Bootstrap. You can find it on their documentation. Uh, and we're just going to be grabbing one of these. Uh, and the other thing is the medium, how long is read time? I think Google tells us it is 265 words per minute is how medium calculates it. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna be going with a rough estimate like that. But okay, we can now go ahead and CD into our video. We can run a code dot to open this up inside of VS Code and we can get started. So in terms of what we actually wanna do, we want to add, uh, we can add bootstrap, or not bootstrap, we can add device and we can add simple form. So those will get added to our gem file. And we're just doing this because, uh, you know, device is working now. So we can once again, just add it real quick. It's not really necessary. We can then go ahead and do a rails, uh, rails G device colon install command. We can then do a rails G device user command to generate our user model. We can then do a uh, rails G simple underscore form colon install space dash dash bootstrap. Oops, bootstrap, just like that. Go ahead and run that so that we can have bootstrap. And then we want to do a Rails G device colon views command to actually generate our device views so that we can get those, uh, those simple form views added for us so it looks pretty. Next, we want to generate our scaffold for our post. So we'll say Rails G scaffold post. Give each post a title. And if you want to, you can give it a user colon belongs to. Uh, it really depends on, on you if you want to do this or not. Uh, I guess we can do it and I'll just show you how to do it real quick because it really doesn't take that much time. So we can do what the user belongs to for the posts. And then after we're done with that, we're going to need two stimulus controllers. So we're going to say Rails G stimulus. We want a reader controller and we're going to want a uh, progress controller. And that should work there. And now that we have all of those, I think we can do a Rails DB colon migrate. And then we should be good to run a bin slash dev, uh, except I don't have Foreman installed. So we have to come over to our gem file, scroll down to the bottom and do a gem for Foreman, comma, and then we want to get this from the GitHub page again. Uh, GitHub colon, there we go. GitHub Copilot doesn't want to wake up this morning either. Uh, so we can do that, hit control plus, and then we can say uh, bundle after we hit enter again because the formatter decides to put it on a new line. We'll wait for that to save, then we can run our bundle install command. That should be installed globally. I thought I fixed that, but I guess not, uh, but whatever. So now we can do a bin slash dev and hopefully get this working. So let's come over to localhost port 3000 and it takes us to the home page. So that's pretty cool. Let's come over to our side panel, come into config and the, oops, not the Puma, the routes.rb. And then the routes.rb, we just wanna set the root of the application to be the post controller and the index action. I'll take us over to here. Looks good. Let me scroll in a bit. Now, the next thing we want to do is add the action text body so that we can have images in our uh, posts. So let's go ahead and let's stop the server real quick, actually. And let's do a Rails G action underscore text colon install command to install action text. Uh, and then we should be good to run a bin slash dev again, just like that. Okay, so let's come over to our side panel, our models and our post.rb in here. Let's say this has rich text and we're going to say this is for the body we can then come over to uh i guess we want to do it like this so let's come into our user because i did say i'd cover this and we'll say this has many posts just like that 
We can then come into our controllers and our post controller. In our post controller, this user ID actually needs to be the body. We don't need to permit the user ID. Up top here, we need to say uh, before action, we wanna say before action, we want to authenticate the user, except for the index and the show methods. So that will make it so you can at least read the post without needing to be logged in. And then for the create, because we'll be authenticated if we get here, we just want to set the at post.user to be equal to the current user. So that, that'll force us to log in if we like click new post here, for example. So we'll, we'll refresh, run the pending migrations, refresh, click new post, and that takes us to our login page. So we can now sign up. I'll do a dean at example.com. I'll copy this email, paste it in as the password, the least secure solution on the planet. And that takes us to the new post page. So let's go into the uh, underscore form page, which is gonna be in our app views post form. Uh, and then in here we have the F dot input for the title and the user. What we wanna do instead here is we want this to be an input for the body because we don't need that user there. Uh, and then we wanna say this is going to be as, and we want this to be as uh, it's going to be rich text, I think. Is that how we do it with simple form? I can never remember. Oh, it needs to be a rich text area, according to the PR. There we go. I don't know why that's so complicated, but whatever. Uh, so now we have the editing capabilities here. We can do a test. One, two, three is the title. We can come over to the, oops, the lorem ipsum page and copy the lorem ipsum over here and paste it. And then halfway through, we'll just insert an attachment. We'll grab that Minecraft image we used last time, I guess. Go ahead and put that one in there. Scroll down a bit, looks good to me. Now let's click create post. That'll create the post, but our, our stuff isn't showing up yet. So we have to come into our post partial. So app views posts underscore post. And then in here, we have the user ID for the post, but I don't want to do that. Instead, we'll do post.user.email to give us the email of the user that posted it. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want to totally reveal their email, you can just do a uh, post.user.email.split. You can split it at the at symbol. You can grab the zeroth element and then you can call dot capitalize on it. And that'll give you just the first part of the email before the at, it'll capitalize. It looks like a fake little username. It's a good placeholder until you implement an actual device username, uh, which, you know, there's tutorials on the channel covering that as well as other people on YouTube have covered it. Uh, but okay, so that gives us a user. Let's now go ahead and let's put the body in here. So we'll just say this needs to have a div for the post.body. Go ahead and close this div, save it, refresh the page. There's our body. Cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's do the hard part here. Let's add in the reader. So for the actual reader, all we need to do is grab that stimulus controller. We'll create a content tag for the div with nothing inside of it. Tell it that the data is a controller for the reader. And then we put a do at the end here, which means we need to put an end at the end down here. So the reason why we do this is because this correlates to that stimulus controller we made. So if we come over here to the app JavaScript controllers, we have a reader underscore controller, which is where we're getting that name from. We use the do block here because there's multiple elements inside that we need to mess around with. The first one we wanna mess around with is going to be our reading time, which we'll do, I guess, right below the user. So we'll just put it down here. This isn't going to be the created at, this is going to be the reading time. And then down here, instead of having the post.created at, what we want to do instead is we want to create another content tag. This one's going to be a span. Again, all of these can be regular divs, doesn't matter. Uh, and then inside of it, we just put nothing with some data and that has a reader underscore target of reading time, which will access inside of the actual stimulus controller. Okay, so now that we've covered that, the other thing we want to do is add the body. So down here we have this regular body, but we don't really want that. Instead, what we'll do, we'll replace this with yet another content tag. This one's going to be for a div. This time, instead of having an empty string like we did in the other two, we actually want to put something inside of it. And the thing we put inside of it is the uh, post.body. We then put the data uh, with a reader target for the body again. We'll take a look at how to uh, actually use those in a second here. So now if we refresh, we get the reading time, we have the body and the body is still being displayed here. You of course don't need to have the, the actual text here that says body, that's totally optional, right? I just like having it there because uh, GitHub Copilot put it there and I'm very lazy. 
So let's come over to our side panel. Let's scroll up and go into the reader controller. So this is where we're going to be doing all of the logic. It's actually not that much. Uh, it's just a couple lines, really. We're going to start by saying, hey, we need to get those list of targets that we created. So we created the reading time target. Remember, the reader has a reading time target right here. So the reader underscore target is reading time. So the way this works is it is the name of the controller underscore target and then the actual thing you're calling it. So we have the controller and then the actual thing we're calling it right here. Inside of here, we're gonna do the following. We start by saying this.readingTime, which is just a method we have to create. Come down here, we create it. And this is pretty straightforward. Basically, we're just gonna say, hey, look, we need to get this dot body capital T target, which is how we get this body, which correlates to uh, this body and it has a target, which is why we use the keyword of target here. And then we grab the text content of that target. And then we just do some pretty basic JS where we say, okay, we have the body. We want to now grab the words per minute, which will hard code to 265. We'll then say the number of words is just splitting the text with uh, based on spaces. And then we just grab the length of that. After we have that length, we can then you know figure out how many uh, minutes it'll take based on the number of words divided by how many we can read per minute. After we figure that out, we can then say, all right, our reading time is going to be the higher end of that. So we're just going to round this up. So we do a math dot ceiling on the minutes, because again, this is going to be the uh, number of minutes divided by the words per minute. So we can easily call the uh, ceiling here to get a safe estimate. So it's not going to like, you know, add 10 minutes to the reading time or anything like that. After we do that, we can then say this dot reading time target, which is this reading time, which is the reading time right here. So when we say reading time colon, we are now putting the thing after the colon or we're setting its value. And we set that value to be the uh, number of minutes space min space red. So if we save all of that, come over here and we refresh, we can now see this is a five minute read right here, right? It doesn't really uh, bother with the image, so we don't have to worry about that, like messing up our estimations. But if we come over here and we create a new post and you also see because we have this set up with a stimulus controller in the uh, post partial, this will work for multiple posts. So we can come down here and we can create a new post and then in here we'll say test. If we just put the word case in here, we can see this, you know, defaults to a one minute read because it is greater than zero, which means this is going to be a fraction that's greater than zero. And then this gets rounded up, not down, which is why we don't get a zero minute read. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now let's do the progress bar. This is actually even easier to figure out because we have Bootstrap installed. Uh, there's really not a lot that we have to do here. So we're gonna come over to our post show page, if you can believe it, because we don't wanna show the, the progress bar for each of the posts. I mean, you could if you want to. Uh, I just didn't think people would want to. What we're gonna do is we're going to create a div with a class of uh, progress. We can then come down here, we'll close this div. Inside of here, we just create yet another call to a content tag where we put nothing inside of it, give it a class of progress dash bar with some data that belongs to the progress controller. And that's all just based, ow, it's all just based off of the progress uh, bar bootstrap page. Just had a bug bite me. Uh, so yeah, this gives you a bunch of different examples and then we just grab one of these and we sort of uh, cannibalize it for our needs. So we have the progress bar here. Now the only other thing we really need to do if we save this is set the stimulus and also make sure that this is attached to the top of the page. So if I come back and I go to, let's say this first post here, which has this really long body. So I'll click show post. Uh, you can see the progress bar doesn't get attached to the top of the page. Now there's two ways to do that. You can either create a class for it or you can create some styles for it. We're just gonna very quickly go create a class for it. We'll come into app assets, style sheets, uh, and I guess the application.bootstrap.scss or the, uh, yeah, this will work. And in here, what we wanna do is we just wanna say this has a dot progress underscore bar. And we'll put this styling in here that I have to reformat. But this causes it to be fixed to the top, have a width of 100% and a Z index of 1000. The Z index, the higher the number, the more forward in the screen it is, which causes it to render above everything. So if we do this, we can then come over here and refresh. Still won't work because we have to actually give it the class. If we come in here, we can give it that uh, custom progress underscore bar, uh, except this needs to actually be in this one up here. 
So we give the outermost div that progress bar, save it, and now you can see it is working as intended. So that's at least scrolling down with us. The next step is to actually give it some, some functionality. For that, we have to come into our progress JavaScript. So we'll come up here, we'll find the progress controller. Inside of the progress controller, it's actually pretty simple. We start by saying this needs to have a window.add event listener for scroll. And when that happens, we want to do a this.calculate progress. And you have two options. You can either do what it's suggesting here with this uh, dot bind to this, which we'll do. Uh, we'll just say calculate progress. And then in here, we just want to do something similar to this, where we say the total height is equal to the document.body.scroll height minus the window.inner height. That gives us the height of the screen. We then grab the progress percent, which is again, just converting it to a fraction, multiplying it by 100. So we get a number between zero and 100. And then we set the width of this progress bar because this, if we look over here, is inside of the outermost progress bar, which has a width of the entire screen. So what that means is the maximum width here is going to be the entire screen. And this sets it to a percentage of the entire screen's width or the entire window's width, sorry. We come over here and we refresh now. As we scroll down, you'll see that progress starts to fill up a little bit. And as we get to the bottom, it should hopefully finish. And of course, you can change this based on where your page has specific reading sections. Maybe you don't want it to be the whole window. Maybe you have like uh, comments down below with all of your ads to actually pay the bills. In that case, you wouldn't do like the full width here. You would just change it to be like the height of the div that encapsulates the entire body. So like here we have, you know, uh, inside of the post partial, we have the entire thing wrapped in an ID of, of, you know, post underscore one in this case, right? Or underscore two, then you would grab that div by its ID and you would just calculate the height of that div instead. But yeah, I thought this was a pretty interesting look at like a couple different ways to use stimulus. One where you have the outer controller wrapping it, one where you just have a single controller. We use targets. We also do this uh, bind here. If we don't have this bind, we don't have the necessary context when we try and do this.element.style. So if we do that and I hit control shift I, you can see as I scroll down, it tells us we have an undefined reading of style. The other thing we can do is we can use the uh, arrow function here. This will also give us that same context. So now if we refresh and scroll around, you can see that works just fine. So you're, you know, it's dealer's choice. You either do the bind or you do this syntax. Both of those will work to keep your context. Uh, really, it's up to you, uh, but you're going to need one of them because if you don't have it, it's going to get mad at you. But yeah, hopefully this is interesting. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.